Go. This is Jolie here for Seconds Out. And uh, Oladipo. First time meeting you, yeah. um, but I've followed you for a while. Obviously, over the last couple of years, your career's gone Thank from you. strength to strength with the zone now. Yeah. We're here today, obviously, for the 2nd of July, the news conference. Ricky Hatton's back. Yeah. That's exciting. Let's start on that. Yeah, it is exciting, right? Strange, strange times. You're getting a lot of these older fighters wanting these exhibition fights. Some of them, you don't know their exhibition or real fights. Like Floyd, it looks like it's a real fight. Whereas Ricky, obviously, said it's an exhibition, it probably will be. I asked him the question, is it going to be just one? Or are you going to do more? Because there are so many fights Ricky could have. He, he, he could fight Floyd. That could be a good exhibition fight. With the likes of Miguel Cotto, one Manuel Marquez. But I think Ricky's the type of fighter, and I think he openly admitted this, he needs to be in the ring. He needs something to focus on, because his mind will go elsewhere. Uh, and I think, um, yeah, I'm excited. Ricky's going to bring out a crowd. The Manchester Arena is a big arena, but I think the lineup he's got as well, I think he'll bring out a crowd. Yeah, definitely. Um, with what you mentioned about Ricky needs to fight for, for mental health reasons and yeah. things like that, let's quickly go on to Tyson Fury now. Why not? It's a good segue. Can Tyson Fury truly retire? I guess that's part one of the question, but with that in mind, like his mental health struggles as well, it's going to be difficult for him to really, he said yesterday, he's cheating up, he's doing the scorings and things yeah. like that. It's going to be difficult. You'd like to think that there is more to boxing now with his life. I mean, he's been with his wife for years, Paris. They've got loads of kids. He, he's now famous all over the world. He finally is getting the respect and response that I think he wanted after the Klitschko fight, which he didn't get. So if he were to walk away, I'd like to think he'd be okay. But again, he's openly admitted this, like boxing keeps him on the straight and narrow. Um, and plus there's, like, there's so many big fights out there. There's so much money on the table. People are having this conversation about is Tyson Fury one of the all-time greats? And he might very well be that, but we need to see more work against more fighters. So I'd like to think Tyson Fury's got a couple more years left. Three or four fights. AJ Usyk, Herkovich, Joe Joyce, potentially. So there's fights out there. Um, but if there isn't, and if this is it, I think mentally he'll be okay. I think he's in a good place now. Yeah, definitely. The knockout last night was, was beautiful. Yeah, it, it was. It was unexpected. If I'm honest with you, you speak to a lot of people and everyone was like, Dylan White by KO, Tyson Fury points. We have to kind of rip that script up. Like Tyson Fury can clearly knock you out. He can clearly hurt you. We saw that against Deontay Wilder as well. Um, I don't know how Dylan White keeps getting knocked out by uppercut. It's happened now where AJ put him down with that, Povetkin as well. I thought Dylan White was poor, like really poor. As much as I want to give Tyson Fury all the plaudits, I just feel like Dylan White didn't do, I, I thought he was going to put it on him. Almost like, a Chisora would. Like Chisora is not going to try and outbox you because boxing ability doesn't have it. He knows what he is. He knows what he is. And I almost feel like, are they trying to make Dillian White a fighter, a boxer? He's a brawler. Get in there, you're 18 stone one, put it on him. And didn't really do it. So in the end, I think Dillian White's going to watch it back and he's going to be disappointed. Um, but look, how many, how many more good things can you say about Tyson Fury? He's so good. He can do everything. He can fight on the back foot. He can fight inside. He's got power. He's bigger than everyone. Six foot nine. A lot of people will say he's not as good as the greats. I'm telling you now, I don't know if he'll beat the greats, but he'll give them a hell of a fight because he's just got so many good things going for him. Yeah, definitely. With that knockdown, the stoppage, of course, he dropped in the same way he dropped in the Povetkin fight, so you could kind of tell that was the beginning of the end. Is it the end for Dillian White? No, it isn't. Um, look, he lost to the lineal heavyweight champion. He lost to a guy that, like I just said, people were talking about as one of the greats. If you lose to that kind of guy, you shouldn't retire. If you lost to a Kalnaki or a Hellenius, then there are questions there. But again, even for Dylan White, there's so many big fights out there. I mean, you could right now do the Chisora trilogy. You could do it. You, you could, and it will sell because they both have sparks at the press conferences. So look, it's the wrong time as a heavyweight to retire because there's just too much money. There are broadcasters that are willing to pay big money because everyone wants talent as well. So I don't think he retires. I mean, he, he done an interview with Steve Bunce in the, in the in the dressing room, he's okay, he's in good spirits. He'll be back, he'll be back soon. Um, you have to work his way back up again. And I think where you have him in the top 10 has changed as well now. Like, Joe Joyce versus him, your favorite Joe Joyce. Hergovic, your favorite Hergovic. So he's got some building to do, but he'll be back. Where do you think White could, or what, sorry, do you think White could be looking at in terms of opponents? Because you mentioned Chisora there. Mm. But in terms of getting back to the top, if he wants to fight for a while time again, it depends what his aims are. Yeah. Is Chisora the correct fight? I don't know if we can even think of White as in getting to the top. 
This isn't like an AJ where we genuinely believe that AJ can compete if he's at his best. Yeah. I almost feel like we know where that ceiling is with Dillian White now. We've seen it against Rivas. That, that was almost life and death for a while. Parker, if that went on for 30 more seconds, that would have probably gone the other way. He got knocked out by Povetkin. So I don't know if it's a case of trying to fight his way back to a world title shot. I think it's just a case of knowing what you are, make some money and just get back in the mix. And if your path opens up to a world title shot, if Fury vacates or whatever happens, then so be it. But I don't think he's at that world caliber level to be fighting for world titles. I think we saw it last night. Look, he was bad. I'm a big admirer of Dylan White. His story is an amazing one, but he just wasn't good. And I think he got exposed a little bit at the top level uh, last night. Definitely. Um, as for you and, and obviously the zone, there's a lot coming up. To talk yeah, about. loads coming up. Obviously, I fly out and look, I'm lucky. I can't lie. <laughs> I fly out on Wednesday for Katie Taylor Serrano, all the build up with that. And then after that, I stay in New York, then fly to Vegas for Canelo. So we've got like a lot of a lot of big shows coming up. But there's a lot of big shows coming up in boxing, full stop. I mean, you think of the same night as Katie Taylor uh, Serrano, you've got Oscar Valdez, Shakur Stevenson. I mean, it's ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? So there's big fight after big fight after big fight. So as much as I work for the zone, I'm still watching all these fights and looking out. It looks like we could get Joseph Parker versus Joe Joyce now. Um, there's a lot of talk about Kilbrook versus Chris Eubank Jr., which is a crazy fight. What will happen with Conor Ben next year or the end of this year? So, yeah, it's a big time for me in boxing, but I think boxing right now is going for a really good place. 94,000 at Wembley for Tyson. I, I never thought anyone could sell 94,000 without AJ. I just thought it's impossible. So it shows the appetite for boxing. So, yeah, big time for me, big time for boxing. Yeah, definitely. Let's talk about Kelbrook, Chris Eubank Jr. That's, uh, that's a good one. Who have you got? What do you think about that fight? Good fight, it's a good fight. I mean, you'd have to favor Chris Eubank. You know what it is, we don't know how good Kel is because Amir's done. So beating up on someone like Amir, I, I don't know if that means, I know Kel was saying after I'm back, I'm back. I, I don't know if you are back because you beat Amir Khan who's not been back yeah. for 10 years, you know what I mean? So you'd have to favor uh, Chris Eubank. He's, he's the bigger guy naturally. I know he says that Kel walks around bigger, but Kel's fat walking around, Chris is ripped and shredded. I think the fight's gonna be 157 and a half pounds, I yeah. think I heard, or 158. I still would have preferred to see Kel versus Connor at 150. I think that's healthy for both. So yeah, my money would be on Chris. But, but even Chris, I mean, still not super convinced with Chris sometimes. He looked okay against Liam Williams. But after that, I think the second half of the fight was great, so we'll see. Yeah, okay, two more then. As this weekend, we've got uh, Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor. Let's start with that. Um, can Amanda Serrano do it? Tasha yeah. Jonas thinks so. Certainly can. Certainly can. I mean, I guess the good thing about working for the zone is I've, I've seen about the last three or four Katie Taylor fights close up. I've worked on three of them. Yeah. And some might say that she's not really as up for it because the level of opponents haven't been good. But I think I've seen a drop off. I think we're starting to see a bit of a deterioration. And that's going to happen. She's been in really tough fights. You think of her fights against Delphine Bassoon, you think of the Tasha Jonas fight as well. She's been in tough fights. Well, I think Serrano almost looks like she's coming into her own. She's confident, she's spiteful, hits hard. She's gonna be the naturally smaller girl. If I had money, I don't have that much. If I had money, I would put it on Serrano to get the job done, but you don't know. I mean, Katie Taylor's considered the GOAT for a reason, and you don't know, but I, I think this could be perfect timing for Serrano. Yeah, definitely. Katie Taylor's last few fights, she really hasn't looked, the, I feel like the Katie Taylor. Yeah, she hasn't, she hasn't. And again, that might be because of level of opponent, but even if, the opponent's rubbish in front of you or not so good. You've got to make them look like they're not so good. And I think she struggled. I think the spikes gone out of her punches. Um, I think her feet maybe don't look as fluid as they used to be. But a Serrano, Madison Square Garden, it'll be full of Irish fans. That will bring out the best in Katie Taylor. So we'll find out in what a week's time that yeah. is that coming up. Five, six days? Yeah. I'm, I'm unbelievable. Okay, and then Oscar Valdez, Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson has a lot of hype behind him. Yeah. And a lot of people think he can win that as well. Um, as for Oscar Valdez, um, I mean, there was that scandal before his last fight. I don't know how scandal. he was still allowed Massive to fight scandal. beforehand. Um, and for that reason, I think it's going to be interesting to see how Oscar Valdez comes in check. Maybe he'll be different because he knows he can't cheat this time. I'm just putting it out there. Shakur Stevenson, though, yeah, a lot of hype behind him. Yeah, a lot of hype. But look, it's good that you, you mentioned what happened with Oscar Valdez in his last fight against Robson Conceição. That fight should never have happened. It did. He didn't look good in the fight as well. Some people thought he lost the fight. But let's not forget as well that the performance, sorry, against uh, Miguel Bichel, yeah. which was a fantastic performance. Miguel Bichel, I thought was the best in the division at the time. 
and he stopped him. So this isn't going to be easy work for Shakur Stevenson. And it's, and it's not supposed to be. We're talking about a unification fight. So yeah, you edge to Shakur Stevenson, but I don't think you can sleep on Oscar Valdez. He's in a fantastic camp with Reynoso and Canelo. I think he looks a lot better. It doesn't take as many punches as he used to. So um, look, I, I would go with Shakur because I think Shakur is just a special talent. I think Shakur is going to run through the divisions. But honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if Shakur doesn't win a title at 147. Yeah. I've seen him and Terence Crawford spar and they're the same size. He's got everything about him. So my money would be on Shakur, but you never know. Oscar Valdez is an unbeaten two-way world champion for a reason. Yeah, well, we'll have to catch up and talk about Errol Spence, Terence Crawford another time. Close. But um, yeah, thanks for your time. It's been, it's been good. Thanks for your time, Adam. Appreciate it.